Hey YouTube, it's another quick one here. It's a yet another Commodore 64 power supply. Uh, I've fixed about five Commodore 64s and I've got loads of power supplies so I'm gradually working my way through them. Um, I've just contacted Ray Carlson and bought another couple of his internal savers for the computers but I thought I'd show you this because uh, I've actually built a Ray Carlson saver. This is a aftermarket, I think, PSU. Uh, Micromate. It's a lot better than the original ones, the design, because it allows... <coughs> The regulator to cool properly. Uh, it's a lot more. It's a lot nicelier. It's a lot more nicely laid out. Um, and so what we've got, we've got a nine volts AC. So I'm not plugged in at the moment. Um, which goes uh, through the caps, um, through the um, rectifier, stored in the cap, out to the yellow and green. And then we've got a little seven eight oh five. That is a seven eight oh five. Um, which is tapped off of this cap um, <clears throat> and then basically I think there's a little cap there and it goes straight out to the red and the blue um, so it's not fused on a 5 volt rail and this could still fail it's old I'm going to check this cap um, I'm going to mount there's only one screw in here so I'm going to mount a fuse on that post there insulate it and then I've made this little board this is a Ray Carlson Sabre um, this is using the same components he did and I've just knocked it up on a bit of Vera board um, basically what it is is a Darlington pair of MPN transistors which um, <clears throat> and a Zener which basically control this relay so that when I've tuned this one so that when the uh, <clears throat> voltage, the input voltage goes above, on this one it's 5.4 the relay kicks off and it cuts the 5 volt rail so if this starts creeping up past 5.4, it will cut the 5 volt rail. And I'll show you the schematic. I mean, I've made a bit of a bodge of that. It was my first attempt. But um, it works. I'll show you it working quick. Uh, so that's how I knocked it up. That's another one I'm doing, which is I'm using like basically real scrappy components I've found. Like a mismatched pair of transistors and and what have you and it does actually work so that's fine so I'll just show you the this this made up one working okay it's a pretty simple setup voltage in ground voltage out ground obviously um, to the multimeter variable power supply let's turn that on 3.5 volts there's no lights on it but you'll hear it click and you'll see the multimeter drop so 3.5 volts uh, I've actually got the wires in the wrong way around there. That's clever twat. And I, let's just put that in the right way around. 3.5 volts. 3.5 volts. So I'm just going to gradually crank up the voltage. off comes back on four point five point four two so so that's good enough like I say I bought Ray's one because I think it's better tuned but just to make the power supply a bit safer there you go it's off so <coughs> And mount that in the power supply. I think it's something along those lines taped down and insulated away from everything else as best I can. And then the fuse, uh, so I'll just do that now. I'll just show you the circuit diagram. I'm not sure I 100% understand it, but I think I do. So this is uh, Ray's saver. And what you've got, you've got 5 volts coming in for a fuse here. And you've got a Zener diode here between ground and 5 volts. Uh, you've got two transistors, so the base of that transistor is connected to the collector of that transistor and the collector of that transistor is connected to a relay, so the relay has got 5 volts and going all the way down to ground if this transistor is on. This is just to stop the diode when it collapses putting spikes back into the transistor and these are just LEDs showing whether it's on or it's off. I think I've even got them the wrong way around but 
Never mind. Okay, so I won't bore you with all the details, but basically, four screws in the transformer come out, one screw here holds it down, one screw holds the regulator in, and the whole assembly lifts out. It's on two little posts there, so you have to just bring it up properly and disconnect these strain relieves and some of the cables are wrapped around these which ain't great because some of them are starting to crack a bit anyway we've taken out this red cable he said with his left hand this red cable out of the board subbed it for a 3 amp servo cable it's only going to do one and a half amps so that's fine that goes into a fuse carrier which will have a one, or a one and a half or a two amp fuse out the fuse carrier into the saver. The saver's been heat shrinked and had uh, drone tape uh, which I use on drones it sticks like hell and uh, it's insulated double insulated there there's nothing underneath it anyway so it's going to stick there the screw will go in underneath and it'll stick down like that and this is the safe line we'll drill a little hole in the front put our LED on, green is okay, out is off and no good. So I'm going to go into that and then another set of wires back out to that. Pick up the red cable that we disconnected, which is uh, this red cable that was used to be in that there. And then pick up the ground there. So join them together and put them back through. And that should be it. So what should happen is if it's safe voltage, the green light should be on. If it goes wrong, the green light will go out. So there we are, it's all wired in. A bit of thermal heat uh, paste or grease on there to the regulator. Board's nice and solid. The fuse is nice and solid. The wiring's all well insulated. We've got our LED here, let's give it a whirl. Okay, just as an afterthought. It's hardly surprising these things fail. This has been on for an hour now. Just testing it out. I'm still good. That's outside the case after a heat sink. So you can imagine what the temperature is inside that little regulator. That's why they fail. Okay, so even though that worked with the leaving the linear regulator in, I, it was getting so hot. Like this heat sink was ridiculous to touch. Ridiculous to touch. So I'm going to swap that out for another switching regulator and all I've done is just ream the, the holes out a little bit bigger and put the uh, wires through where the pins on the regulator were. you just got to be a little bit careful because these traces are only very, very badly stuck down. There's no bridging I've checked. Uh, so we'll try that out quick. Okay, so there's a little switcher version with its light and everything. So switching, five, that's come off. Got the Colfs and Saver. I should all be good, just test it out. So there we go, there's the upgraded power supply with a little green light on it now. If light goes out, I know that the saver's been tripped. It's now got a switching power supply and a saver in there. And it's working fine. And it passed the original Ray Carlson test as well. Okay, so this is the second iteration of the design. I've tried to shrink it down as much as possible around the relay there. It's exactly the same circuit, but this is made of scrap components, so the transistors aren't the same as each other. They're not the same as the spec in the I was given, but it works fine. Those were what I had transistor wires, and they're fine. Um, it hasn't got a light yet, and it hasn't got a fuse yet, but it does trip at 5.4 volts. This is the power in. That's the common ground, and I've just wrapped components around as best I can. I'm going to plastic dip it because for example there there's not a lot of clearance so I'll just make sure it can't short out and then we'll get that in the C64. Happy days, got to put a fuse on it and that should be good. Okay just one final little test before I mount it. Oh mate! Here we go 5.1 5.2 5.3 off. Bring it back. 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Where will it go? Oh, 
5.42. 5.42, so happy with that. Now I can mount it. So on this particular C64, don't need to cut any tracks. All I've done is lift that little inductor, voltage in, voltage out will be back to the other side of the inductor. And I'm probably going to mount it about here. I'm not going to mount it there because the drone tape so sticky it could ruin the board. So probably just there. And then the ground, I think is somewhere up here. I'll link Ray's, uh, Ray's pages because he's got all of the information on there. So there we are, that's all in. Just mounted here. Not going to go anywhere. I use that stuff to stick the trim on my car. Uh, power in. Power out and ground. Like that. Let's try it out. Okay, so that's with the shield on. I've uh, tried to heat sink the chips a bit better, but I'll probably do something different. But this is all nice to have the original. So there you go, that's all working. The original supply there. It's actually a switch mode supply with a fuse in, which was another video. The computer is. Uh, got a saver on it. The reason for that, when I got it, the post was broken so I just covered it over. It's working lovely. It's maybe some cooling because the, uh, I'm not sure about the cooling in there, but thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Cheers, bye.